Last week, over 140 countries from all over the world got together to discuss the global governance of genetic resources for food and agriculture. The Commission gave itself a, a brave new mandate to consider aquatic genetic resources, forestry genetic resources, microbial genetic resources, and animal genetic resources for food and agriculture. In the past, the Commission's work has been focused pretty much exclusively on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture, while it was the body under which the international treaty was being negotiated. Now that the treaty has been finished and come into force, there's room for the Commission to take on new work. Now the Commission could have decided to do same old, same old, and nothing particularly interesting. But what's interesting is they really did give themselves a new mandate to do a lot more in-depth work on a much broader range of resources than they have in the past. For me, one of the most interesting things that happened last week is the Commission took on or gave itself the mandate to look at access and benefit sharing issues for all of genetic resources for food and agriculture over the course of the next few years. That's a subject that's been pretty much exclusively the domain of the CBD, the Convention on Biological Diversity. So bringing it back into an agricultural forum should have pretty interesting implications for the world over the next few years. My hope is that one day we'll look back at the finalization of the International Treaty and this most recent meeting of the Commission and see that they were the beginning of the pendulum starting to swing back in favor of agriculture. In recent years, we've seen a, a precipitous drop in the amount of support that's available at international levels for agricultural research and agricultural development. It really does feel right now like things are beginning to change again in favor of agriculture. I certainly hope that's the way it works out.